Hello humans, welcome to Game Development Operations from A to Z. Uh, this is an introduction video about uh, the, this, the series basically and uh, before we begin I just wanted to uh, introduce myself and to tell ex people exactly what to expect from this. Now um, I am not a professional at everything here you, that you're gonna see alright, I, I am more of a jack of all trades uh, kind of guy. Uh, I don't have deep understanding of every piece of software that I'm going to show here um, and I'm not going to be uh, showing you some fancy pants skill uh, skill high-level uh, techniques um, you know on how to be, be making assets or programming and uh, such things. However I will say that I think if you are looking for something in particular you should probably be looking somewhere else because this is aimed at people who have no idea how a game is made and just think of getting into it and uh, mostly uh, I'm gonna be talking about the pipeline at first so you know depending on what time you see this there may not be videos out. Uh, speaking of uh, timeline uh, depending you know how far away you are from this video in terms of time uh, you know, tool sets change, tool sets migrate. You might, you know, uh, as it is, it's 2017, and the GDC just came out, and uh, Unreal Engine 4, which is the engine that I'll be using. So, if you want any other engine or uh, just interested in the pipeline, you know, um, you know, continue watching if you don't want to waste your time. But whatever. So, um, as it is, Unreal Engine is growing really fast. It's an open source platform, as you know. So, currently, they're implementing. Um, well, it's an experimental mode right now, but I suspect by two thousand by four point sixteen, they're going to have an implemented tool set for basic modeling and asset creation in terms of three D, which is the mesh editor that they're programming. Uh, also, depending on the time of you watching this, they may be uh, there may be you know massive um, increases in VR technology, not only in uh, implementation and capabilities, but also in terms of price availability. So you probably have one. Um, and uh, also the workflow in the engine uh, might be the same in terms of uh, concepts however non-conceptually uh, you'll be using a VR or uh, you know depends on which is faster which is more practical you know with which people are more comfortable with uh, obviously uh, you know it would be best if you knew both however at the current state I cannot offer you VR editing um, you know uh, videos of any kind since I haven't done it myself and to be honest at this at this point in time I don't think it's even worth it because it's just not as I just don't like the way it looks right now okay I, it's, I think it's kind of finicky and you know it's, you, to be fair you can't really beat a, a mouse and keyboard um, for development I think anyway uh, unless you're modeling in which case yeah things are a slightly different like for level design and modeling and, and things that require you to be on site and work with your hands yeah uh, you know form some form of VR with uh, you know high, high tech um, high level of um, movement recognition would be very nice because you can use your hands uh, and do whatever you want uh, however uh, as it is Right now, we won't be doing any of that fancy stuff. We'll be just getting into these things. I will basically show you the pipeline um, that I have established, or at least I have come up to the understanding that this is the pipeline. Because to be fair, there's many different workflows, there's many different programs, uh, but in general, a game is not made in the engine. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna jump into the en engine right now, show you, you know, a couple of boxes, you know, a couple of uh, uh, balls here and there and then we're gonna just have this game you know it's a very mi minimalistic um, asset game uh, now this is not what we're gonna be doing because y you know you want to get your hands into the idea of the game you know your game is being a uh, um, a culmination of many different works okay it it's basically where you put everything together it's not where you create something out of the blue and usually okay usually all right, uh, but we'll be talking about this later. I'll be talking about the pipeline in the next video. So, as as I've already said, uh, you you will probably not be a specialist at anything here. Okay, if you're a solo uh, a solo you know one man army, if you're a duet, you know if you're three or four people, um, you know the, the more people you ha you have, uh, the better you are at uh, you know specializing in particular things. Obviously, uh, an optimal um, minimum, a minimum optimal size of a development team would be five people, right? You're gonna have a programmer, a 2D artist, a 3D artist, a level designer, you know, and, and an audio guy. 
uh, I don't know if you already said about an audio guy, but like y you have enough people to at least split your dependencies on, all right? Because not to mention that you need, you know, uh, a server admin if you're running a VR machine, you know, with some, um, you know, some servers, etc. Um, so whatever you're doing, you, you need the more people, the better. Uh, but as a solo guy, right, or as a two two team guy, guys, uh, it's just very hard to. Um, do all of this yourself at a high level because the knowledge required is usually you know people major for four or five years in themselves uh, in this stuff now obviously that doesn't mean that you can't do anything and a lot of things you know the the more complicated they get the more subtle they are uh, you know even if you take a look at this uh, um, you know very low resolution low polygon uh, model here that's been uh, just rotating around uh, it's not made by a professional artist obviously okay I mean the writing here is all pixelated uh, it just looks crap uh, but on the other hand obviously it's optimized but that's you know performance based performance based um, so if you can do this okay if you can do this which is very basic stuff um, you will be relatively fine in terms of your starting point as an artist uh, but as you are, as you decrease in size, at least in starting size, and in general, it's best to know how the work, you know, what the pipeline is, how the workflows uh, integrate, and how they're different from each other. It is best to be a jack of all trades if you're start thinking of starting your own company or making your own game. Um, on the other hand, if you're thinking of working for a company or working for someone else, this is not a good thing to do because you'd probably be better off focusing on your own um, specialization, right? If you're an artist, you want to do, you know, you, you want to know everything about art. You don't want to know anything about programming, uh, okay? Not necessarily, you know, in the language that people program in. Uh, maybe Maya use, uses MailScript or Python, but, you know, that's vastly different from C++, for example. Um, you know, different languages have different setups and require different um, uh, library knowledge. Uh, so, you know, uh, make your choice here and now, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.